Hello and welcome back to Neil Invests. Thanks for joining me here today. It's time for our second installment of five minute stocks. In this series, we look to look at the top line fundamentals of a given company over the course of just five minutes. The first video seemed to be pretty well received. If you haven't seen it, I'll put a link here, check it out. I got a good few comments and some good interaction with a few of you guys, so I really appreciate that. So I think we'll do a few of these if they continue to land well with you guys. Let me know, and let me know as well if there's any way we can improve them going forward. So I said in the first video that the first three people to comment and put a recommendation for the next video, I would do a video on one of those three companies. So I had, uh, so had three people come in first and they didn't all put one company down. So we had Tesla, we had GSK, we had AFC Energy, we had Guardant Health, I don't know how you pronounce that, and we had CrowdStrike put forward by the first three people. Uh, and as you can tell by the thumbnail for this video that you've clicked on and the title, you already know what we're going with. But thank you to Mark WB for his recommendation for this video. And we are going to be looking into GlaxoSmith. Client. Ticker symbol GSK. So who are GSK? They are a healthcare company and they describe themselves as providing three main products. The first one being prescription medicines, the second one being vaccines, and the third one being consumer healthcare products, things you can get over the counter, toothpaste, mouthwash, things like that. So we've got a market price of 66 billion at the moment and a PE ratio of 11.19. So pretty stable in terms of the numbers. So stock is currently priced at 13 pounds, just short, and um, we had a year high of 17 and a year low of 12 pounds. So it's pretty stable. It will be a stable company. It's gonna be a stable company, irrelevant to what's going on around us, and that is gonna to continue to be a trend into the future. And it has a pretty stable dividend. It hasn't been growing it every year, but it has been increasing it intermittently, and it has been holding it where it can. The issue I have with it at the moment is it's probably a little bit high, so 6.17% and it is around 80% in terms of payout ratio. So anything in terms of payout ratio above 60, 70%, you start to get a little bit nervous. It is generating a lot of revenue, however, so it can afford to cover it for the time being. But I do wonder if the dividend is a little bit high at the moment. So then when we look at the chart, we can see that, yeah, that volatility continues. So um, we've been up, we've been down. There's no consistent picture in terms of the last year. There's no consistent picture in terms of five years, to be honest with you. Um, so it has got a, probably got a trend lined upwards over that period of time. But if you're looking at this stock from a growth perspective, you're certainly not gonna have much out of it. Uh, however, at the moment, it is a little bit down versus where it has been. So is that an opportunity to not only get a good dividend stock, but to get some good growth built into it as well? And this page on the website gives a good top line of how they have some of the numbers. And what sticks out for me here is their R&D budget, which is $4.6 billion. So it's pretty significant, that's a good amount of cash. So growth in the pharma industry comes from R&D and new product development. So the more they have, the more they have invested in this area, the more growth they're gonna get. Um, this is how it works with pharma companies in general, and they tend to ge generally tend to have a pretty high R&D budget. If you look at it in comparison to Johnson & Johnson, so there's the world's leading pharma company at the moment, they spend around 8.8 .8 billion. So it's about twice the size uh, in terms of business, and it's about twice the amount in terms of um, R&D budget, so it stands to reason. So here we can see on this chart as well, the top 10 pharma companies by market cap. And as of last year, GSK are in seventh place, having moved up one place over the course of the previous year. So they're well positioned to tussle out with the big boys, no question about that. So is GSK a buy at the moment? So really strong company. Um, there has been some volatility in terms of share price, but they're stable in terms of their revenue. So when you look at the revenue chart, it has been increasing over the last few years. On top of that, you've got a really attractive dividend that whilst maybe be a little bit, um, just a little bit careful in terms of any cuts that may be coming along down the line, it is the well placed to be able to cover it as they are at the moment. And as they've been growing year over year in terms of revenue and also in industry in a sector that is gonna be growing, there's no question about that over the next 10, 20, 30, 40 years. Pharma is going to continue to generate more and more cash as more and more people get older. So we've got an aging population, we've got an aging demographic throughout the whole world, not just within the UK, not just within the US. That aging population requires more and more medical intervention. That medical intervention is going to come from the big pharma boys, of which GSK are one. 
So one of the things that I want to raise now at this point then is another reason why I think big healthcare companies are going to do really well over the coming years is because the decreasing cost of sequencing human genome. So it's a bit techy, so bear with me. So over the course of the over the course of the last couple of decades, the cost of sequencing human human genomes has gone down at a rate equivalent to Moore's law. So what this basically means is that the cost in terms of being able to do development within the R&D sector within healthcare has gotten cheaper and cheaper and cheaper, which means exponentially it's gotten cheaper. At the same time, developments have increased significantly. We've been able to crack certain things that we haven't been able to crack before. And going forward into the coming years, that decreasing cost of human genome sequencing at the same time as the increased amount of revenue that's going into R&D will mean that we're going to start to get some really interesting so with this in mind, I've got GSK down as a pretty strong buy at the moment. I don't currently hold this um, business, but I am going to be looking into it. Perhaps it can look to increase my UK dividend part of my portfolio. So I am looking to increase my UK part. And given that I think it is generally pretty under undervalued at the moment, it could be an opportunity to lump in, but it could also be a good time to start dollar cost averaging into it. So both scenarios are, are, are viable at the moment. However, please bear in mind I am not a financial advisor please do your own research but i do think that gsk have got a pretty strong future ahead of them over there if especially if your time horizon is like 10 20 years like it is for me i think they've got a great future hope this is helpful guys as i mentioned before please drop a comment below what you want me to cover in the next video and we'll try and crack a few of these out and we can really get ramped up with these um, with this series all right if you haven't already please consider subscribing to the channel so you don't miss out on any future content and thanks for joining me today take care